what's happening everybody jeremy from whistlekick here joined by andrew adams as i often am hey andrew good and, morning good morning and a, and a face that some of you out there might recognize a voice you might recognize if you pay attention to whistlekick stuff i got justin lee ford with me today with, with us today and we're going to be talking about uh an interesting aspect of the whistle kick i i, I never quite know what to call the, the the broad umbrella the whistle kick umbrella i guess we'll, we'll call it that. i was going to call it universe but that that feels a, li a little uh self-aggrandizing and uh, I, don't, I don't want to do that but we're going to talk about martial journal and specifically uh we're going to talk about the fact that we're doing something that people are already saying is dumb. And guess what? It's not for you. It's the fact that Marshall <laughs> Journal is coming out with a print edition. That's right. Print is not dead. So, Andrew, Justin, thanks for, for joining me today. Happy to be here. Happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, great to have you on, Justin. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Justin, of course, is the editor-in-chief of Marshall Journal in, in its various forms, both of them. The, the the print and the digital and uh of course andrew comes on and helps me out do do the thing that we do and and talked this is the first time we've collaborated on kind of a an interview sort of thing isn't it yeah that's true the only three person episode that you and i have done together was with sergeant hamilton yeah which really was more of us just kind of going hey we'll let you talk wow that's a lot to think about okay yeah yeah that was that was a good episode i enjoyed that <laughs> Um, so I don't, I don't know where, where we're going to start maybe for listeners out there or viewers, cause this one we're doing video who may not know what Marshall journal is. Justin, you want to, you want to tell everybody what Marshall journal is? Ooh, absolutely. So I will start off with a simple phrase. We are a, as of right now, website that's transitioning to also include a magazine print edition rather. And, uh, we're all about building bridges rather than walls in the world of martial arts. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, personal essays from martial artists on their own stories of training or perhaps teaching or owning a school. We've got uh, many, many, many book reviews and movie reviews of stuff that's in martial arts genre. And uh, just anything in the world of martial arts, we're talking about it, we're, we're uh, promoting it and, and speaking on it. Again, building those bridges rather than the walls between the martial arts. Yeah. So, and that's it. And, th and there are a couple things that are really important to know, is, I, I think, for, for listeners and viewers, is that 100% of what's involved at MarshallJournal.com is volunteer. Mm -hmm. If you if you look, you can look very closely. I don't think you'll be able to find any direct references to Whistlekick. We've done that intentionally mm -hmm. because I had this vision in the early days that this a site like this needed to exist. And the early collaborators on this were my friends, Daniel Hartz and, and Jared Wilson. And we talked about what this might look like and we got it rolling. And, and yeah. Justin, I, when did you come in? I don't, you've been around, so I don't remember when it happened. Uh, it had to be about two or three years ago, if I'm thinking about that correctly. Okay. My, um, my Kung Fu teacher actually ran a podcast and he'd heard about uh, Whistle Kick and Marshall Journal. And when you heard mm. how things were going with Marshall Journal, he's like, listen, You've been writing for me and my website. You've been writing for a couple yeah. of the print publications. You got to do this. Yeah. And so I listened to my teacher and hopped on board. Good. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you did. Shout out to your instructor there. What, what what's his name? Uh, Craig but, Kiesling, teaching okay. over in uh, Decatur, Georgia. All right. Thank you, Craig, for for sending us this this wonderful guy who <laughs> has taken so much work off my plate. <laughs> yes. Marshall Journal's been a lot of fun because we've done some really cool stuff with very little. It's just been, it's been a labor of love. People talk about that. They, you know, it's all volunteer. And inevitably that ends up being like one person doing all the work. And, mm -hmm. and it's not one person. There are a bunch of people doing the work and we've had writing from, have we cracked the hundred person mark? It's gotta be close. I believe hundred so. different people contributing to this over the last few years. And no, not everybody's writing dozens of articles, but some people have. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say the, the goal of Marshall Journal was that it would collect people who wanted to write about martial arts and that their personal brands would take off. Marshall Journal attracts more 
attention by website view count than anything else Whistlekick does. Yes. And and do you accept uh, submissions from anyone? Or do you only have people you specifically accept uh, submissions from Marshall Journal for? So if anyone's interested in writing for us, absolutely, they can contact me. Uh, my email is justin at marshalljournal.com. And if anyone's interested, whether they've written before for a martial art publication or any other publication or not, by all means, just reach out. If they uh, seem like they have a good story to tell or if they seem like a, uh, a good character, right? A good character, but not <laughs> that lovable martial art a-hole, then uh, we'll be happy to have them, right? We'll be happy to help yeah. spread their words. We've had a lot of different stuff. Like my most recent piece was on, I, th I think it was five, you know, uh, five types of oh. uh, martial artists to avoid. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a part two because I posted it and a bunch of people said, what about this type? What about this type? What about this type? So, yep. Yep. you know, kind of these, these cliche martial arts jerks. And that was my latest piece. I don't write super often. I've got a lot of other stuff going on and that's okay. You know, we've got people who've come in and they, they had one thing that they really wanted to contribute. Like we, we had a reader write to me and say, you know, my, I think it was daughter noticed there wasn't any kids content, but yes. she really wanted to draw a picture for Marshall journal. Can, can we do that? And I was like, sure. You know, that's the beauty of an online platform is there's no space limitations. We're just limited by time. Exactly. Exactly. And there's you write some stuff on there too, right? Justin. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, I've written a couple different things from book reviews. Uh, I've done a lot of work with Tuttle Publications mm -hmm. and uh, just some personal essays as well, talking about uh, traditional martial arts and how it relates to modern martial arts and some of the similarities and perhaps differences. And yeah. yeah it's, there's something for everyone. It, there, there is. And, and that's the goal. And that's, you know, that's what we're working on. So if people want to contribute by all means. You know, and there is a huge, if I'd say, I, I look through, I mean, I look through every once in a while, and there's a breadth of of uh, articles on yeah. all sorts of topics, which is really amazing. Absolutely. That was one of the goals. That yep. is one of the goals, and it's only going to grow more. We're going to get to the point where there's posts coming out every single day. This is exponential growth that's happening every single week with Marshall Journal, so... It's going to continue to grow. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of those success yeah. uh, paths in a second. So, so let's talk print, right? I set it up at the beginning. Oh. Print is not dead. Why, why, why would we go through <laughs> this? Why would we endure this? Cause we've been working on this for a while when every magazine on the planet seems to be going digital, shutting down, et cetera. You know, everybody knows I'm insane. <laughs> and I'm willing to throw crazy amounts of time and whatever money I can find at a project. But are you also that crazy? Short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, not gonna lie, there is an element of people believe this is dead, and you and I both know print's not dead. There's still validity in it. There's this element in me that's just that stubborn person going, ah, ah you're gonna see this is actually a thing. Yeah. Um, but also, just thinking about what kind of opportunity that presents to the people that have been with us for a long time, right? And that we've had a lot of dedicated writers and also editors that have been helping with us and everything we've been doing so much. So in some ways, it's a, a reward for them and a reward to the, the readership of, hey, you've been with us, you've been supporting us. Guess what? Now we're making this a print magazine. Now this is continued growth that we're showcasing to you and you're a part of this. Yeah. Now I know that when we started talking about this. We started from the concept of what can we do that is different? Mm -hmm. And we just started stacking a, a <laughs> list of yes. things. What can we do that flies in the face of the traditional print industry? And, you know, why don't you run through some of those, those things? And, and, you know, Andrew, I'm look, kind of looking for you to be the, um, the one on the outside here. So if we gloss over something, or if you want Justin to unpack something a little bit deeper, you know, please jump in because, you know, I, I've been in on this. So sometimes, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. So I'm looking you you be that outside perspective. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to, because uh, for the listeners out there, I know nearly nothing about the print magazine that's coming out. In fact, truth be told, I was not positive. That's what this uh, discussion was going <laughs> to be about until about 
Oh, let's see, we've been recording for about 10 minutes. So about 12 minutes ago, I realized, oh, we're going to be talking about a print magazine. So okay. I will be happy to interject with questions. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's perfect, then. Oh, all right. Well, let's go over a couple of differences. For starters, and, and I think this is one of the biggest things, we're focusing almost 100% on the readers and the readership, right? It's about bringing value to them. We are not trying to stuff uh, a bunch of advertisements and hidden areas. And, and, and this is 100%. What can we bring as value to the, uh, the readers? Yeah. Okay. It's a free publication with a limited run. We're looking at about 100 issues we'll be giving, that we'll be uh, giving out in the first run. Uh, this is, if you look at the front cover, we're all about the aesthetic of it, right? We're not just going to put some stock image cover or anything on there. This is a well-designed cover piece. Oh, you're bringing it up? <laughs> oh, I only have a, I only have a laser printer. It up. So if you're, if you're watching, you can, you can oh, kind of see cool. what's going on. This is the kind of thing what, you can what it, collect. Andrew, what does this look like to you? What does this remind you of? Um, it reminds Real simple. Me, I mean, it reminds me of a cartoon. Okay. To say it another way? Manga. Manga, comic book. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Which, which, which answers one of my questions, which was what, what style of magazine slat, you know, size, like what are we looking for? Are we going full color? Are we going just it black will be and white? full color. I just, I don't have a color printer. And Correct. so when we do these mock-ups, they come out black and white for me. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Original artwork on every cover. Mm -hmm. The cover okay. will be artwork. Which leads to my, my first question, which is yeah. um, magazine suggests a regular occurrence. Yes. So is this something that will be coming out uh, ambitiously every day, doubtful, uh, every <laughs> week, every month, once a year, quarterly? I'm curious how often we will be able to see these and get our hands on these magazines. Absolutely. So we're going to start off with quarterly. And of course, uh, as success builds, we can bring it in front of readers more regularly. But uh, again, in the beginning, we're looking at as quarterly. Yep. Yeah. And if you're if you're just listening, if you're not watching, you may have not realized that this is this is a half page, right? It's mm -hmm. eight and a half by five and a half. You know, it is not. This is this is a, this is an old test. This is this is definitely not going on the first one. Uh, that was just a. Um, it, random image I grabbed off the internet as a part of a mock-up. And as we've put this together, you know, so the size saves money. The size, it, it saves money in shipping and in printing. And, you know, one of the things you mentioned, Justin, was, was about not trying to stuff ads into this. We have a hard limit of 20% of the space we'll be advertising. Mm -hmm. We have committed to that. Because when we look at, you know, we, we and, and it's not just martial, the, there are some martial arts magazines left, but it just any magazine, you grab any magazine, even off the newsstand, and you just paid, you know, the only time I buy magazines is when I'm flying and I haven't flown anywhere in over a year. So I haven't bought magazines in a while. But the last time I bought a magazine, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be Rolling Stone, it could be Men's Health, it's all ads. It's like 30, 40% ads. And even the content feels like it's ads. And it drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. And so as we were batting together, what are we going to do different? That was one of the big things that we, we talked about. Absolutely. And think about what that does to value as well. Because if a magazine is all ads, well, then a reader is not necessarily interested in it anymore. They're not going to look at it as closely. And then your ads aren't worth that much anymore because the readers don't really care, right? By giving only so much room for advertisements, we're ensuring that every single advertisement has to be good quality because there's only so much space. You gotta make sure that's actually used up well. And two, well, readers are actually paying attention now. Your ads are gonna get noticed. They're in front of people that are gonna be reading this multiple times, this collectible type of publication. And we, we are, we're not just leaving that to chance, are we? We are, reinforcing that and one of the core aspects that we haven't talked about yet is that um yeah there's the print edition which the debut issue will, will be 100 copies so mm -hmm. think of it as collectible rather mm -hmm. than commodity and there's a digital version that you know everybody can get but of course 
people are going to want to get the, the print copy. So we have built a method that helps them get the print copy. They can move up as we grow and release more, you know, hopefully we'll go from, you know, 100 to 200 to who knows how many. As the count goes up, we can raise ad prices, you know, not number of ads, but the, the price of the ads because they're dirt cheap in the first one because they can be. And the very same process that helps you move from the digital version of the magazine to the print version is also the same one that I don't want to say guarantees ads are going to be received differently, but really helps it. And so, uh, Justin, why don't you talk about that? I'm, yes. Cause I'm, I'm pumped about this part. Yes. All right. So uh, let me backtrack first a little okay. bit here. All right. Uh, for the readers that do want to get in on this, there's a, an email form, a uh, 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 sign up form on Marshall Journal so that you can drop down your email, your information so that we can keep in contact and uh, let you be the first to get this issue. Um, again, you guys are going to be part of something really amazing. It's already amazing. It's, it's only going to get even it's, more. It's super cool. We, there's so much. And this is the thing about uh, uh, anything that's in physical form is you don't get to engage with it until it's done, right? It's not like marshalljournal.com where we're just rolling out articles or, you know, when we do podcast episodes here, as one is done, it goes mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Unlike, I don't know, like a TV show or a movie where you got to wait, you know, the whole thing gets finished and then it gets released. Exactly. I mean, there, there's so much power to this. And like we said, print's not dead. You know, there's a couple magazines already still going on, going strong. Uh, also martial art magazines, but then people are still paying for subscription-based things. There's subscription boxes for pro, uh, produce, for uh, nerd stuff, which I love. <laughs> and, uh, you know, recurring uh, subscriptions, that's still a viable thing. So it's just about bringing good value and, and that's what we're doing. This evergreen content. So you, you didn't you didn't answer the question though that right, I asked. Right, right, right. Let's pull let's, back. Let's, 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 I asked that one more time. We, we got you nailed there. I'm got glad you got. The, I was about to say the same thing, Jeremy. <laughs> let's bring Can it you back. imagine what our meetings are like? We, we have Thursday morning <laughs> meetings, and it's you know it's scheduled for 30 minutes. It's usually an hour, and it's 45 minutes of us getting really excited, and then ah, yep. oh, we got to get some work done. Let's yeah. talk about what we have to get get done. So all right, so let's bring that back. Ask that question one more time. <laughs> By by what process do people get the option to move from digital to print, and how is that related to us making sure that advertisers get more value out of their ads? So one of the the biggest things that we're excited on the front is there's going to be a poll a thing they can submit in, and it you vote you vote on the best piece of content, the best ad, and when you have to when you vote on those kind of things, that means you're paying attention to those kind of things. Hopefully, so again, right. So again, uh, just increases value there. Let, let me unpack that a little bit more. Please. So let's say I, you know, I don't get in on the first hundred mm -hmm. for the first issue, and I want to get it for the second issue. I go to a website that will be referenced in the magazine, mm -hmm. and I fill out this form that says, "Hey, I want to get the print edition." Mm -hmm. And here's my address. And by the way, if you get the print edition, you still have to do this to get to keep your spot on the list. This is a limited, uh, limited release. Every issue, it will always be a limited release. We are mm -hmm. never going to put out so many of these that people don't want to get them. Yes. Okay. And so I go to either maintain my place on the list or to get onto the list, which will be a waiting list. And I'm trying to move up mm -hmm. and I'm voting for. What was the best article, the best piece mm -hmm. of written content, the best piece of visual content, so photo, drawing, whatever, and the best advertising. Now, the best con the best pieces of content, graphic and, and text, those contributors get a bonus. Yes, everybody involved in this will be paid, unlike marshalljournal.com, where you know, we, we've built this really complex model on how, how much we can afford to pay. And it's not a lot to start, but it's something. But then advertisers get free advertising in future issues. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that this is further incentive for them to make things as great as it can be. Because we're, we're talking about substantial bonuses. You know, the, the, the bonus on writing, I think as we've got it laid out now is roughly like 12 X mm -hmm. what they're getting paid for a, a 250 word article. Right. So it's, it's real. It's, and it's even, it's more than a thousand word article. 
So if you're, if that gives you the, the incentive to go back and do another edit and put another hour into it, boom, there you go. But then the advertisers, the expectation over time is that they're going to get creative and mm -hmm. instead of just ads, quote unquote ads, it's going to be real content. You know, think about like the Super Bowl. Why do we, most of us tune into the Super Bowl? It's not the game. It's the ads. But why mm -hmm. the ads? Because they're great ads. And that's what we're trying to incentivize. That That's an incredibly interesting way of looking at it and not something that I and likely the listeners and viewers uh, will have ever heard before. That, you know, as an advertiser, if you're putting out the same ad every single week, I mean, this won't be a weekly publication, sure. but if it's always the same, you're going to saturate your v listeners, viewers, uh, and they're not going to find it as appealing. So that's really cool. If I could unpack one or not please, unpack, please uh, do. Uh, one question you mentioned, uh, Jeremy, how, you know, in the first ep issue, there will be a form that you, a website you can go to, but let's say if you're only going to be releasing a hundred of these first issues, mm -hmm. uh, Let's say there's, you know, 25 gazillion people listening to this podcast right now. How do they get in on making sure they're one of the first hundred? Marshalljournal.com. Sign up for the email list that we've never used. Mm -hmm. And we're going to reach out when it's time. We're going to reach out to everyone and say, hey, the first hundred people to go here and fill out their mailing address in this probably Google form or however we're going to do it. Yep. You will be the hundred people who get issue one. So marshalljournal.com, that's the place to be. Yep. That's the place to be. So what are some of the other things that we're doing that are a little bit different, Justin? Ooh, all we, right. We, ta we, t we talked about the incentivizing of ads. We talked about the fact that writers get paid, which, you know, it's not abnormal in, in print, but, you know, for what we've been doing, it's it's not what we've been doing. We talked about having to sign up to to get on the list, to stay on the list uh the the size the you know we're trying to win it's not just if you if you think about it and maybe this is a good place for you to run with it it's we're not just looking at hey we want you to read the whole thing mm -hmm. we want you to read the whole thing more than once yes. and keep it on a shelf yes one of our longer term goals and and we won't hit the page count to do this yet but if you look at and, and andrew i don't know if you you you're a, a manga guy but there are some collections that as you line up the the print books, you have a picture along the spine. Yep. You know, we'll do that too. Everything that we can do to make this a valued collectible that people are receiving. Did we hit the point that it's free? Did we mention that that those hundred? You had mentioned that, okay. yes. It's, it's free. Like it, there's no, I, I hate paying for a magazine and having ads crammed down my throat. That's mm -hmm. weird to me. So we've, we've, that's why we've done the model the way we have. Yeah, just think about that difference for a second, right? How often do you pay for a magazine or pay for a subscription for a magazine and then just ignore it after the first run, after the first read through because there's so many ads or the, the content isn't really pertinent to you? This is a free thing that you can read multiple times. That's incredible, right? So that's where the engagement comes in place. That repeated, uh, the, the evergreen content, the ability to stay engaged with everything that you're reading that's one of the big differences that we want to focus on, right? This isn't something just for a one and done read through. We want this to be something that stays with you for a while. Again, a collectible. Yep. Yeah. And as, as it grows, you know, we've modeled out the first, I think six or maybe even 12 issues mm -hmm. internally, how that grows. And it's growing not only in the number of issues that we release, um, the cost of the ads, mm -hmm. um, which we should come back and talk about ad costs in a second. Um, the amount that contributors get paid, yes, and the number of pages, yes. You know, we're 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 starting with a you know, if you want to use nerdy entrepreneur speak, minimum viable product, and That's we're gonna it. roll that up, just slowly march it up, and get to something that is a real thick book. Mm -hmm. You know, does it remain quarterly? I don't know. We don't know yet. We don't know that yet. We don't know frequency yet. But we know where we're trying to take this. And, you know, who wouldn't love to get some really sweet martial arts weekly magazine? I mean, we're not opposed to that. Yes. But the numbers have to work and we just have to, it, it all has to line up. Why, yeah. why don't you talk about ads and price of ads? Because um, I've been having a lot of conversation with, with advertisers who 
they don't get it at first, but once they get it, they're like, oh, I get it. Let's do it. Yes. All right. Well, I have to pull up the um, the ad numbers to give exact numbers there. Um, but essentially boiling down to this, though. I've, I've got them in my head. Okay, perfect. Because I know you've been reaching out to a couple of people while I've been working on some of the other internal things here. But um, we've really been focused on making the, the ad prices as low cost, high value yep. as possible, right? We are, again, we've gone through all the numbers and the logistics of everything so we can see what makes this a good deal, not just for the readers that are getting this for free, but also what can we do for the advertisers and help them out the best? So uh, can you run through those exact numbers? Yeah. So the, uh, our, our ad pricing is based on a couple things. We wanted to make it competitive to internet ad prices, mm-hmm. right? Because if you, if you, when we're talking about a finite number of printed copies, it doesn't make sense for us to just say, oh, you know, we can put you in, in this and, and, you know, you can have this half a page and it'll be, you know, $900 and you're going to go to 30,000 copies or 50,000, how, however many it is, right? And that's really cheap per, but how many people see that ad versus internet? And if anybody out there has ever had to pay for ads on the internet, which, you know, <laughs> I do quite a bit, I know what I'm paying per impression and per click. And these numbers are really high, especially when you get to more generic terms. A quarter page, so that is, you know, a quarter of a quarter of this, you know, yes. so roughly not quite the size of my phone. I don't know. Business card. Bigger than a business card. Mm-hmm. Is 40 is 45 cents per. Yes. It's 45 cents per. So in so if, if you have a quarter page ad in, in issue one, it's going to cost you $45. Which that's amazing price. It, it amazing is. And, and I've had some pushback. People were like, well, but it's only a hundred. I'm like, oh, hold, hold on, hold on. You're getting all the digital downloads for free. Yep. The thousands of downloads that this is going to be are free. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of value. Yes. And so over time, as that grows and people are like, oh, I'm trying to get in on the print. I want to read the digital and I'm grabbing it. I'm downloading it. I'm filling out the form. I'm trying to move into the limited edition category. That 45 cents per starts to move up. Mm -hmm. Because And how do we know that they're paying attention to the ads? Because they know they're going to have to vote for their best ad. Are there going to be people who going to be people who will just randomly click one? Yes. Of course. Well, of course. But not all of them and not most of them. And how do most people flip through a magazine. That's an ad. That's an ad. That's an ad. Okay. Oh, oh, there's something I can read. Mm-hmm. And if advertisers do what we are uh, recommending they do and making great ads, mm-hmm. people are actually going to look for them in the way that they do tune into the Super Bowl. Exactly. Right. And for all the advertisers that want to get more information on that kind of stuff, again, they can email me at justin at marshalljournal.com. We've got a media kit that talks about yeah. Uh, what our reach is and how long we've been doing this kind of thing. And uh, it gives more important information pertinent to what they're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, have we missed anything? Yeah, well, I, had, I had one more question. Okay. I, 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 most everything I understand, but if I, if I or a listener goes to marshalljournal.com right now and spends the three and a half years you would need to read all of the articles there. <laughs> There's a lot there. There's a lot. Um, and I sign up for this. I, I'm one of the lucky hundred that gets this first issue. Mm-hmm. Is all of the content in that issue going to be brand new? Yes. Or is it going to be stuff that you've already f- printed on 100% the web? 100% new. That's yep. awesome. New stuff, fresh for your eyes. Yep. In our first draft, I think we said we might reuse 20%, but nothing in our later models has done that. Correct. That's that's thoroughly amazing. <laughs> And, you know, we've got enough people who want to write and, you know, that's one of the, the, the pluses of us doing this small to start with is that we don't have to fill pages. Mm -hmm. We have more, everything that we're doing is, is based on kind of evolution of the magazine and maintaining 
the scarcity of the resources. So if we have, you know, a ton of people clamoring to write more, we'll open up more pages. If we don't, we won't. If we have advertisers clamoring for more ad space and it's driving the price up, mm -hmm. then we can pay the writers more, which mm -hmm. should incentivize more people to want to write, right? So it's this very um, free market approach. It is. To, to We've got these variables that we can play with to try to ultimately to get the best result for everyone. Exactly. We've been working on this for a bit now. And again, over a year. Yeah, it's uh, been a over a year we've been working. It has been, which is amazing to think about now. And we're just now unveiling it seriously. Yeah. And keep in mind the idea that, that rushed success can be failure in disguise. So, Ooh. right? Yeah. There's a quote for, the, for everything, <laughs> you know. Rush success can be Listeners, now, now you know why I like working with them. <laughs> <laughs> so we have looked at these numbers. We've looked at uh, what we're actually capable of bringing, right? And this is what we've decided is absolutely the best. Yep. Right. So This is where, where we're starting. This is where so we're starting. I, I, I think we've hit all the high points. You know, just reiterate, if you want more information, mm -hmm. Justin at MarshallJournal.com. If you want to sign up or to get on the list so we can reach out to you and say, hey, give us your address, mm -hmm. sign up at MarshallJournal.com. Marshall Journal is the place to be. Andrew, right. anything else? Excellent. No, thank you so much, Justin, for coming on and letting us know. Um, I think there are going to be 100 very excited people when this comes out. And there are going to be 45 gazillion people unhappy because yeah. they won't get one. <laughs> Yeah, how, how often do you get to be in on the ground floor or something? Right? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all your hard work, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to chat with you guys and to uh, be on the show with you guys.